Hi everyone, I'm Georgia and I'm an 8th grader at Woodside Elementary School. It's a public school about 20 miles from here. I love science and I'm really excited to be here and to get to share with you my passion of STEM and the places it's taken me. So last fall, I got to attend Broadcom Masters, which is a national science fair for middle school students. We spent the whole week solving hands-on challenges, making friends, and really learning about different ways that science, different roles science plays in our everyday lives. I was thrilled to win the Samuel I Foundation Prize, but to me, science fair is more about than the destination, it's about the journey. So I'd like to talk about the different th things I did to get me there. So when I was little, I loved asking questions, and anything and everything and sparked curiosity. One of my favorite things to do was to tinker with stuff and to build things. For example, when I was in kindergarten, I deci decided I was going to build a robot to do my math homework for me because I was sick of fraction. I was sick of addition. And as I got more and more into science, I decided I wanted to take a computer science class. So I crashed the middle school Python elective, and it was really, really fun. But to me, it was I was kind of frustrated because not only was I the only third grader, I was also the only girl. And so the next year, I started a, West, this, a coding group called the West Codettes, which was an all-girls group of fourth and fifth graders who got together once a month and coded together. Essentially, I dragged my friends into a room and was like, we're going to learn computer science, yay! Um, but that was really when I fell in love with computer science and realized that it would it begin to play a big part in my life. And at the same time, I really decided I could combine my love of engineering and my love of computer science into something bigger. And that was around the time I got involved in science fairs. Some people think that science fairs are boring and that you're just like presenting a project to a bunch of old judges, but I think it's really fun because you get to meet a bunch of different kids from super different backgrounds who all have this common knowledge and common passion of science. And it's really cool you get to have these discussions with kids your age who are all trying to solve problems that are facing society. In DC, when I was, I was standing there at Project Judging, which was three hours long, but I was really, and I was a little bit nervous, but I was also really, really excited because all around me were these middle schoolers who loved science. And the girl next to me, for example, volunteered at the Veterans Hospital every day in Texas, and she realized that a lot of the veterans had wounds that weren't healing and thought, what if we could use tilapia skin to help with wound regeneration, which I thought was crazy. And so did Grey's Anatomy, apparently, because that was on a few weeks ago. And there was another kid his grandmother had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and he wanted to make the process easier for other people. So he thought, could he combine his knowledge of machine learning with Alzheimer's research to hopefully be able to diagnose Al Alzheimer's before the onset of symptoms so that treatments are more effective? And I was really inspired by the kids around me. And I thought, you know, if our generation has to figure out issues like climate change and how to improve access to technology as the world becomes more and more, dependent on robots, we got this. Because I, got to, I was surrounded by kids who are super passionate, super enthusiastic, and who really, we are the future of technology. And we will dictate the way it goes. And that's why I think it is so cool to be in this room with you guys. I wish when I was in computer, learning computer science that I was able to have an opportunity like this to be surrounded by girls in a more structured environment. Because in three years of, of middle school computer science classes, there hasn't been a single girl for me. And that's been hard. Every time you walk in, the boys kind of look at you like, who's that? It's like, me. <laughs> but I, it would be really fun to have another ponytail holder in the classroom. Uh, I'd also like to talk about how I got into my project. Which So I had a lot of passion for science, but I had very little understanding. Neither of my parents are engineers. They're amazing finance people, but yeah, no. Um, so I started with Legos. And the first prototype I built, I wanted to look at how solar energy could be made more efficient because my uncle had just gotten solar. And I realized that by, if you had a panel that followed the sun, it, you could make solar energy more efficient. So I built one out of Legos. And then I decided I'm going to try to make something that could work, maybe out of wood or acrylic. I failed so many times. Every time I'd take out a circuit board, kind of like a Raspberry Pi, I'd solder and it would blow up. You know, when they say you fry something, it can actually smoke. Did that five times. <laughs> but every time I failed, I learned something new. And I think that was one of the crucial takeaways I got from my project, was how to fail and how to fail gracefully. And how to be like, yeah, I don't have a working prototype in a state science fair, but I'm going to show up anyway. And it really paid off. And I'm really glad to have participated in science fair. And I would really encourage you guys to, because science is everywhere. If you look around you, there's so many different problems that 
we, someone needs to solve. And you know, sometimes the greatest inventors are people with a different aspect who maybe aren't in the tech industry and caught up in it, but just an outside observer. Because science isn't just for Einstein, it's for all of us. It's for everybody. Everybody can be a scientist. Everybody can ask questions. Everybody can conduct their own research, ask questions, whether it be, why do some soccer balls go farther than others? Or how can I make a faster sled? To how can we work on cancer research? There's so many different things that are just waiting for us to solve. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, what was like the first thing that you ever built when you um, started doing sciencey stuff? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, one of the first like computer science things I built, or I remember building, was I animated the life cycle of a flower using like blocks that you drag together. Um, I also tried to make something that used my math homework. Didn't really work, but calculators are great. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'd say probably the animation. <laughs> How did you first get interested in science? So I loved asking questions. And just when nobody was able to tell me the answer, I'd try and figure it out myself. And that gradually uh, became more interested in trying to build stuff and be like, here's a problem. How can we use like creative thinking? And how can we be inspired to find a tangible solution? And also, yeah, just like there's so many different things around us that we need solving. And I like to use my hands to build something, to build things. Um, what impact has your solar invention made on like the world? Yeah, so uh, what, what I basically did was I thought, how can we make solar energy more efficient and cheaper? And so I built a data-driven dual axis solar tracker, which I originally thought about maybe getting a patent for it, but I decided not to. But I have been, I have met with a couple of diff or with a solar energy executive, uh, with the CEO of Next Tracker who's working on single axis, and we kind of shared ideas. And I really hope that uh, even if like a data-driven dual axis solar tracker, if it's used in like, more residential purposes, but even just to like, spread awareness about solar energy and to come up with different ways for different types of projects that people can use solar energy. Um, what do you want to be when you're older? Uh, I'm not really sure yet, but I really like math and I really like science and I want to do something with both of those. Great. Any other questions from anyone? Lots of great questions so far. Any other thoughts or ideas, questions? Any of our chaperones and instructors have any questions? So Georgia, where are some of the places you've been since you've uh, done the science fair? Yeah, so science fair has opened so many different doors for me, and it's taken me all over the country. So I started off at my school science fair, which is like a mile from my house, uh, and then I went to the county science fair. And I also, uh, from science fair, I went down to Southern California, and I got to see the California Science Center, which if you ever get a chance, I'd recommend going. It's really cool. There's a bunch of different exhibits. Um, but when I got the call from Broadcom Masters, I actually got to go to DC. And we got to meet with Ivanka Trump in the building right next to the White House. And we got to go to like the Capitol building and just see a bunch of different sites in our country. And to just meet with a bunch of different innovators and engineers and really get to ask them questions and talk about like how they see the world and how, what they think, what problems they're working on right now. And we just kind of got to have a think tank. And we share, compared notes and shared ideas. And it was really cool. Another question over here. Brilliant work, what you're working on. So I was just curious to understand, did you face any challenges while working on these projects? I faced a lot of challenges because, like I said, I had no clue what I was doing. So the first challenge for me was to get the software to work. And I had, I had some experience coding, but not as much. And I was trying to synchronize like two different pre-written codes together. And I was having a really hard time doing that. And I spent like two months trying to get the codes to work together. And I was like working every day, and I couldn't get it. But finally, I was able to fix all the bugs. And then another one was I had to teach myself to solder, which was kind of challenging. But I figured it out, but I wasn't very good at it. And so every time I tried to solder a circuit board, I'd blow it up. 
Uh, but eventually I got better at it and I got better at reading the schematics and just knowing where to like fuse things together. And then I also had challenges building it and I went through seven different prototypes. And so by my seventh, it was, took a lot less power to turn and it was uh, a lot more feasible and a lot uh, less expensive. Oh. Great, any other, any other questions or thoughts? Anything else anyone wants to share? So you talked about a lot of different, different things that you did as part of your project. Does everyone understand all those different terms to use, like a prototype? Does everyone know what a prototype is? Yeah? Yeah? And so when you were working on your project, you had your idea first. Yes. And you really started with the idea and then thought, what are all the skills I need to learn in order to do that? Yeah. Right? And I learned a lot by doing, too. Yeah. So knowing that you didn't start with much experience with coding, for example, what did you do? How did you figure out what to do? You're kind of figuring it out as you went, right? Yeah. So what was that like? Uh, it was really interesting. It was incredibly frustrating at times and incredibly rewarding at others. Uh, two things I really like to use was I like to use YouTube, just Google, how to solder, how to uh, different way, like Python tutorials. Also GitHub is like, has a bunch of different code on it if you want to look at what other people are writing and just see different styles they use. And I also use Khan Academy. Um, what's solder? OK, so soldering is if you want to, like if you, for example, need to get two wires together, you would like, you take this solder, which is this me metal with a really low melting point, and then you take the soldering iron, which is basically it has a handle, and then it's a super hot metal stick. And you, use, you hold the soldering iron to the metal, and it'll fuse it around whatever you're trying to do. And you can also fuse it to a circuit board, right? Because a metal electricity can flow through it. So if you put metal on the in like in the right places, you'll change the way the circuit board works. So that would that's soldering, and it takes a bit of practice to get used to. Great question, yeah. And so soldering is like the act of doing that is connecting different metals, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Great, good question. Um, any other thoughts, questions, anything else? No. Yeah. Uh, why did you uh, get interested in solar panels and all Yeah, that? so this is two years ago in August. Me and my dad were driving to the eclipse because I was super interested in astrophysics and just I, we, my, we had family in Oregon and I really wanted to go. And on the way, my uncle called to say that he had gotten solar energy, solar panels installed on his roof. And he was like, Georgia, in 20 years, all free electricity. I was like, 20 years? That's a long time. And so I was, on the tr ride there, I was Googling different ways that scientists were like maximizing the output of solar energy. And so one of these ways is called a dual axis solar tracker, which are these panels that follow the sun throughout the day. But the issue is they use these sensors to follow the sun, which break pretty easily and they're also really expensive. And I thought, what if we could get rid of these sensors and what if we could just program a panel to know where the sun is? Because we could predict where the sun is for the eclipse, so, and we, so that, therefore, we know when the sun will go behind the moon or Earth. So, why, so therefore, can't we predict when the sun will be at other times of day, too? So I had a question. What is the next challenge you're trying to solve? Uh, so I've been tinkering around with a couple of different things. But one thing I'm working for, on for school is I'm trying to make a camera that's able to take American Sign Language or gestures and convert it into spoken word English which it's really hard, but I'm working on my machine learning skills and hopefully I'll bring that into fruition. Excellent. Oh, there's another question. Great. Have you ever gotten hurt while doing your projects? Have I ever gotten hurt? Um, I try to use like, common, like com safety precautions. So like when soldering, I'd wear like safety glasses so I don't get solder in my eyes. So I don't think I've ever like gotten hurt hurt. I've probably pinched myself a couple of times trying to like put boxes. Oh yeah, uh, I also have burned my fingers and my mom's fingers. Because <laughs> we were trying to hold different wires and they weren't insulated and yeah. So yeah, get insulated wires if you plan on touching them. Great, any other, any other last questions before we wrap up? Yeah, so I'm, you kind of mentioned that one of the new projects you're working on is with sign language, which is amazing. That's really exciting. Um, what would you recommend to other students about kind of looking at the world around them and trying to identify 
what they might work on, what kind of projects they might want to take on, or what problems they might want to solve. Because sometimes when you look around the world, there's just so many things. Yeah. And how do you narrow it down and figure that out? I would say find something you're passionate about. Because for me, for Science Fair, I was working on my project for more than a year. And so if it's not something you like, it's going to seem more like work than fun. So if you're interested in like sports, for example, you could do something related to sports. If you're interested in climate change or renewable resources, you could do something in that field. I just recommend you do something you're interested in and something that you feel is challenging and that you could learn from. And yeah, have fun. That would be my... Great. Question. And so I have one last question then. Um, I know that you've mentioned to me and in your presentation today that um, it was difficult and challenging for you being in situations where you didn't feel like there were enough girls in the situation, knowing that we're here with a lot of amazing young women who are getting excited about science, technology, engineering, and math. What advice would you give them as they're kind of moving on from this stage of their life and taking on new projects? Uh, whenever I walk into a class and it's like all boys, I feel like, do I, I always internally ask myself, like, do I belong here? And I feel like the answer for me is yes, and the answer for all of you is yes. We all belong in STEM. STEM is for everybody. It's not just for the people that think it's for them. It's for, it's for who are like in STEM class or like who think, oh, I'm, I want to be an engineer. Like anybody can be an engineer. Science and engineering and technology and math are for everybody. And just really, if you like it, do it. Like don't let other people tell you what you can't and can't do. Like don't let other people set your limitations.